Hey, this is producer Blake with the Shoot from the Hip. I feel that although this is a completely useless podcast with no affirmation to any valid point at all, it's been the fastest growing smorgasbord of superfluous jabber I've seen in decades. And now a brief word from our sponsor. Hey, hipsters, it's getting warmer outside, so you know what that means? It's shaved ice time. Paradise Hawaiian Shaved Ice in Suwannee, Georgia has partnered with us to give our listeners a 15% off code to use when they visit. Use the code SHOOT FROM THE HIP for 15% off of your total. Try it today at 2855 Lawrenceville Suwannee Road in Suwannee, Georgia. Again, it's Paradise Hawaiian Shaved Ice in Suwannee, Georgia. Use the code SHOOT FROM THE HIP for 15% off your total today. All right, I know that we want to uh, move into talking about some stuff. We've got a roundtable discussion. Some stuff, but... <laughs> just stuff. That's all we were talking <laughs> well, about. I, I don't want to spoil it too early. But uh, first of all, I, I want to remind everyone that if you're liking the Facebook page, which we've had quite a few people like it recently, um, you be sure to go ahead and shoot us a screenshot of our liked page in a direct message and then in that direct message, not in a post or anything like that, but in a direct message, also include your address uh, so that we can send you a postcard and we'll send you a personalized postcard. Uh, we've definitely gotten uh, one or two so far. And um, we... Uh, it's not worth the postcard if it's one or two. Come on. Yeah, yeah. We, <laughs> Overwhelm us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we, we, we buy in bulk. <laughs> which uh, we do have a, a 50 count limit uh, just because we our hands will get tired. And we're not used to our sponsors that only much. brought in so much money, so yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but anyway, let's uh, let's move on to our roundtable discussion. So yeah, yeah. yes, yeah, yeah. our roundtable discussion yeah. is a little bit outside of my wheelhouse, a little bit more so. But uh, we wanted to talk about the most dominant athletes and why. Yes, and uh, th- this is really broad because we're talking about athletes, so. This could go into a lot of different sports realms, um, but uh, I'll go ahead and put it to our probably our resident expert more so would be Aaron. Mm, you heard it here first. Folks. Oh man, Aaron! <laughs> so sorry, Lancer, but I'm just making an assumption. <laughs> no, no, Aaron. Aaron knows one or two things. Okay, yeah. that's about it. Yep, yeah. it's it's pretty much. Well, this um, is the only thing that I hand off to you. So. Yeah, athletes and um, coffee. That's about the only things I I yeah. really uh, know. So most dominant athletes and why I think it's important right off the bat to kind of to kind of clarify what the word dominant really means. Um, That way we kind of have a basis to work off of. So this is kind of my thought. You guys chime in here Um, in order for somebody. And I'm not a huge fan of the word dominant. It's hard to quantify, uh, you know, for me a little bit. I think winning has to be part of that. Um, You know, athlete is competition. Mm -hmm. So has to be somebody that has won at the highest level. In my opinion, it has to be multiple times in order for them to qualify as most dominant. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, it has to be somebody who has um, su- sustained their success yeah. um, over a period of years, um, over a long time. And um, But I don't think that's always the biggest qualifier because somebody can be on the scene for five years and obliterate it for five years, and they're super dominant. Yeah, right. They right. could shut an industry down in five years. Right, so, like you got you got people who get injured, and their career's over way too early. Right, and so, like, like, can I make an example real quick? I was and about I'm to not come a, up I, with an example. Real I'm quick not a too. UFC person, really. Okay. Um, but um, and I, 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 this is not like a like a gender thing. I just don't watch UFC. I don't watch women's UFC. But yeah. there was a short stretch where no one could beat Ronda Rousey. Yeah. Right. And she was insanely mm-hmm. dominant. Right. I never watched one fight, but for a, she didn't she didn't fight for a long time, but for a short time she was the most dominant. Right. Let me, so let me throw I don't think a... I don't think I guess career length is a is a big determinant. Right. I, I was going to say another example would be maybe Yao Ming. Yes. Very very dominant player. Yes. Not a, but, not a long career. Right. I was going to say, but his career ended. A little too quickly, just because it injury did. He and... doesn't qualify though, because he never won at the highest level. Yeah, fair enough. But you you are correct. Um, you know, was insanely talented, yep. and just dominated people, but for a short amount of time. This so is, I, this I is coming that... from someone who like never watches NBA. <laughs> no, but that, I mean, it's True. a it's a good take. So I think you have to kind of qualify. Um, you know, for instance, 
I think it's a much easier to evaluate. Lancer, I don't know if you agree with me, in an individual sport. This is a much yes. easier thing. Yeah. When you get into team sports, Matt, you've played soccer. Lancer, yeah. you've played a lot of team sports. I've played, you know, quite a few. It there's a lot of factors at play, yes. and, and every team sport is different. Mm-hmm. Um, football, you got eleven men on the field at a time. Yeah, there's a lot more that has to happen. Yeah, for somebody to be considered dominant in football than in let's say basketball, where you have five guys on a team out there at a time, or mm-hmm. hockey, which is what six. So, um, you know, there, there's just a lot in play there. So I think evaluating, uh, you know, baseball is a harder evaluation. Yeah. So um, let's jump into it, and we'll just go. Um, do you want to go by, like, sport or just by who you think is your top? I was going to say, if we go by sport, I uh, both of mine are from soccer just because. That's what you know. That's, that's, your that's thing, what I know. Yeah. That's Don't hold it best. against him, hipsters. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I, I'll go start ahead us and, off. I'll go ahead and start us off because. Uh, and there's there's a lot of debate on this just because, because I don't have a soccer player because I never grew up playing it or watching it. Yeah, I I could probably throw something out there, but I wouldn't really mm-hmm. know what I'm talking oh, about. Oh, and and I want I want to throw out another thing before we get into the actual individuals. Sure. Is like um, a lot of times we talk about players today, and this is one argument I make a lot. Players mm-hmm. today are better than what they were 20, 30, 40 years ago. Yeah, it's a different game. Yeah, the game changes, right? But yes. as far as being dominant, I think you just I had think to be dominant against who you played I'm against. I'm going to push back on that a little bit, okay, because I think that the game has changed in a lot of ways. But that's like saying that's like saying John D. Rockefeller couldn't make any money today because of all the regulation. Well, it's, it's not like saying those guys are inferior. Right, right. They played a different game. Right. Yes, it's not that if they would if their talent would be in today's day they would be inferior to these athletes because mm-hmm. they uh, okay for instance the NBA is a really good example of this back in back in the fifties and sixties they would adapt 60s, and adjust is what you're saying exactly right. my point right no like, that's like what I'm saying too yeah. so I I think it's fair to compare I think it's fair to compare guys and just say look. These guys were the best of their time, mm-hmm. but it was a different era. Like yeah. in basketball, those guys were not – I mean they weren't making this kind of money that people are making now. So the same guys that were your dominant athletes in the 50s and 60s in the off season, they were selling insurance to make ends meet. No, and, so and, it's, a, it's a different yeah, ballgame. I, 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 that's what had, I'm saying. Okay, but that's what, that, that is exactly what I'm saying. So is, it does translate then is what we're saying. Yeah, yes. so what I'm saying is you had to be dominant against who you played against. Okay, yes. So we're not yeah. saying like, well, they wouldn't have really been dominant in this era so they don't right. count. Right, right. Okay. exactly. Right. No, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, because yeah, mm-hmm. I think for the most part – I think we're an adapting race. I think people can yep. adapt to it. I mean, it's not like, man, you know, businessmen today would have totally, you know, taken out the Andrew Carnegie's and the Rockefellers. I think those guys would have been tycoons in this day and age just as much as they were back yeah, well, in the early, it, uh, all of the, the late 1800s. The dominant category it factors in a few different things. One is natural talent. Another one is hard work. Yep. And then just S- sustained success has yeah. to be in there. Uh-huh. Right. So Matt, soccer, kick it off. Yeah, um, <laughs> um, Pele. Yes, is and I'm just throwing it out there as quickly as possible. But Pe- Pele, and there's a lot of names that I could throw out, and some of them you'd probably recognize. Some of them you might not. There's like Maradona. There's there's a lot that I could pull from, and Zimran I'm not going to go. Zidane, Zidane <laughs> is my favorite. Zidane? Yeah, yeah he, he's my favorite just because he headbutted the guy that well, one time. You know, yeah. That was my favorite. That's because it's fun to watch. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he he was good. Yeah, but um, has soccer always been officiated the same way though? No, I was going to say, does the has the game changed a lot from yes. like Pele to you know Cristiano Ronaldo? Yeah, in Pele's day, you could pass the ball back to the keeper and he could pick it up. Okay. There's there's a lot of factors that change the game quite a bit. Okay. But uh, but that's okay. That's just my ignorance. Yeah. It's not. <laughs> yeah. I just didn't know. Yeah. No. But uh, but Pele, he's been lauded as the greatest soccer player of all time, and not only by like laymen who watch the game, by a lot of professional soccer players as well. And so that that kind of gives him a little bit of a gold star. But then he moved also from you know, Brazil and playing uh, for the Brazil team, the national team and stuff like that, World Cups, to playing in the U.S. And it took the U.S. soccer from basically nothing right. to s- growing into something Well, I was going to say, I'm not even a soccer person, and I know Pele. Right. Everyone right? If you would say Pele. who's the most dominant soccer player, I would probably just say Pele because that's what I know. Right. Because that's like the folklore of soccer. Right, right. Well, and, you know, like you said, it – in one of those things where 
he might not, you know, if he were to play in the same style that he did back in the day to play today, he might not do that well. But he's one of those guys that was so adaptive that I think he would have been an excellent right. soccer player regardless. Right. Um, another person that came to mind was Mia Hamm. So okay. I guess to female to give the uh, the the female kudos on here, but uh, greatest uh, female soccer player of all time. Um, she had multiple wor- world championships, uh, multiple world cups. Um, Did she, she set like a bunch of records and everything? Like, uh, I believe so. Yeah, um, I, I believe know. I believe she had a lot of like goal scoring records and stuff like that. Um, okay, I can't remember right off uh, like all of her records and things, but she just became known as like the soccer person. She was put on logos and things like right. that. She yeah, just, I remember. I remember as a yeah. kid, like Mia Hamm was all the rage. Yeah. So she's just that other household name that everyone yeah. knows, Mia Ham. I, I I totally agree there. I would I'm gonna give you my number one probably of all the athletes that I could think of. Um it's it's so hard to quantify who's the greatest in every sport combined. Right. But I think you guys would agree we're in kind of the same we're all in the same uh cycle of life, the same lifespan. And for me, this one has made an impact. To me, the the most dominant athlete I've ever seen is Michael Phelps. Yeah, um, he's he owns the the world gold record medal mm-hmm. um, title, um, and there are a few things that were like must see television. Yeah, but for me, Michael Phelps with a chance to win the gold mm-hmm. was must see television. Yeah, right. And this, you know, he he had like one year. I don't know if it was um, the Olympics were in Japan that year or something where or Beijing yeah, where he didn't Beijing. do as well. He still won like a gold or two, mm-hmm. but he kind of kind of stumbled a little bit. Yeah. And then he came back and in was it Rio, I believe? Um they, something like that. They had the, so. the Olympics and they definitely had it there semi recently. Yes. Okay, remember. and that and that was when he this was his latest one before he kind of I think he's retired now. I think um, so. I think so, we'll see. Um but maybe he's just smoking pot again. He, <laughs> <laughs> he he came back as it was kind of a little bit of a comeback. Yeah. Like he he had, had yeah. some, some different issues. And he came back, and there was one. I remember one particular race for the gold. Um, there was a guy. I don't know if he was from Brazil or not, but he was like a young swimmer who was like basically working out right in front of him. Mm-hmm. And Phelps is sitting there with his headphones on, just me mugging this guy to oh, death. Yeah. That turned into a meme. I think. Yes, it, yeah. it's still a meme. It is so great, and he's just staring holes through this guy. Mm-hmm. And there's, I still have the picture somewhere. There's a great shot during during the race. They both came out of the water at the same time, and this kid was winning at one point. They both came out, and it shows Phelps, and he's just staring right towards the finish line, getting his breath. And it shows the other kid, and he's looking over at Phelps <laughs> as he's swimming. Mm-hmm. And the, the caption at the top said, losers focus on winners. Nice. Winners focus on winning. Nice. And Phelps came back and beat him mm-hmm. and kind of put him in his place and, and broke the record. And it was just like, oh, man, what a yeah. – like that guy was just built to yeah. swim better than everybody yeah. else on the yeah. planet. He was like genetically Genetically perfect. modified <laughs> yes. to swim. He, yeah. Like his dimensions and everything was perfect for him. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. Just so. super dominant. I mean, man crush from Lancer. <laughs> but, I mean, you know. I mean, gold. His ma- physique was excellent. He has but a small the, chin, though. Here's Very the cool thing chin. about Phelps is you're not just pulling from, like, American swimmers here. Yeah. Like, this guy is the most dominant world Olympian class. Yeah. ever. Mm-hmm. And there's been a lot of Olympians. Definition so of world class. He, to me, to me, he's right at the top of the list. Yeah. So, so many world records broken. Yeah. So I, I, I have Michael Phelps listed on here. I got a lot of his stats. The only reason I didn't put Michael Phelps at the top was because there's so many different ways he could have won. He could have done like the butterfly, the backstroke. The yeah, way. you're right. There's there were like a, a lot yeah. of avenues yeah. to to take that. Title. But but like I'm not trying to take anything away from him. I think he's awesome. But I got a person at the top, and I think a lot of people don't like this guy. But when it really comes down to it, he is dominant, and that's Floyd Mayweather. Floyd okay. Mayweather has a. I'm going to push back. But okay. Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. Let me. I think I know how you're going to push back. But Floyd <laughs> Mayweather has. Do you a, think it's justified? Do what? How I'm going to push back? Uh, somewhat, but I'm going to defend it right now. Okay. Uh, let's see if I can defend it before you throw it out. <laughs> all right. So I'm just going to uh, sit Floyd, back. <laughs> Floyd Mayweather, as you all know, has a 50 and 0 record. Now. Yeah, I knew that. That 50 and 0. <laughs> he tells is, everybody <laughs> that 50 and 0 is a little tainted 
Yes, it and, is. And I will I will not disagree with that. Like he fought he fought a UFC fighter and counts it as a right. as a boxing record. He fought uh, Manny Pacquiao after his prime, I believe. But way after his prime, and I and let let's let's give him like five or six other fights where he fought people past their prime or like it wasn't really a, a justified fight. Right. That's still over forty wins of just never getting beaten. Sure. And that's extremely impressive. Um now his attitude, his personality, I don't like it. <laughs> but you cannot deny Yeah, he's a horrible dude. Yeah, yeah. He's a I don't think he's a I think he's a he's, terrible he's, human he's being. He's a bad human being. <laughs> but he bad he is a good being. boxer. But yeah, you can't beat the like no one has been able to beat this guy. In all fairness, okay. He you're you're right. His record has been a little bit tainted. And part of that is is that he would never fight anybody when he knew he was gonna lose. He never did. Right. Like, the Pacquiao fight, it's pretty well known. Like, Pacquiao was trying to get that fight a long time ago, and Floyd wouldn't give it to him. Right. Until Pacquiao was old, shoulder was a little bit banged up. In fact, they came into that fight, and until after the fight, people found out, like, Pacquiao's shoulder was pretty jacked up for that fight. Right. You know, the Floyd Mayweather, him and him and uh, or Floyd and um, uh, McGregor's fight, um, they called that the great heist. Because he knew he was just going to go in there, and it would take very little effort to beat right. uh, Connor. But they were just going to get insanely rich off the fight. Um, the other thing too is, and and I don't mean like to hold errors against each other, but I think it's pretty fair to say, boxing is almost nothing now. Right, it's it, almost nothing. And I mean, yeah, not, I agree. I'm not trying to take away from like Canelo you think and guys it, like that. You think MMA is taking that over? I think MMA has taken that over, but I just don't. I think American culture has moved away from from violence as a sport. Now, granted, we love our football, but I mean, there's been a lot of attacks lobbied against football, and I think but know, MMA's exploded pretty well. It, so. it has, and part of part of what's helped that I think is the involvement of women in it too. But really, the golden age of boxing, if you look back, like there were so many good boxers. And if you're like, in the last 15 years, if you're like, name, name the really good boxers of the last 15 years, you're going to name like two guys. Maybe yeah. you include Canelo, but it's going to be Floyd and Manny. Right. Those are the only guys Th- anybody they, knows. Well, and that's another, that's another thing to help the Mayweather argument as being dominant is whenever the sport is dying, he brings it back to life in a way. But I don't know as if he brought it back. Well, like because he, nobody's really watching. If he's it though, fighting, right? if he fights, they watch. If Mayweather fights or if I didn't Pacquiao pay for fights, it. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I mean, Did you pay for it? <laughs> uh, I had a group of guys come together nice. and pay for the yeah. um, one of the fights. For it, yeah. yeah. Now, but going off of the individual, and we also talked a little bit about the teams. So can I? Can I? Yeah, can I ahead. push back on this? Go so ahead. Floyd. Um, Floyd was fifty no. Just did your research, I see. I, I wanted <laughs> I, I thought something, but I wanted to um I wanted to verify this. Okay. So here's where I'd push back and say specifically in the sport of boxing, um I would say Rocky Marciano is a more dominant fighter. He fought in a much harder time. Um he's an older fighter. But I, remember, we're not talking about the time period. Agree. It's who they went against. Agree. Yeah. Hey, but but, but if old... a sport but if a sport isn't but if a sport is on the decline and you're not having your premier like premier athletes are not boxing anymore, but Floyd Floyd touts his 15-0 record. Rocky Marciano was 49 and 0, 43 knockouts. Oh, was he 49 and 0? He was 49 and 0. He never lost a bout, and he had 43 knockouts. Okay, like that's wow. a that's a no, lot no. of knockouts. Um, yeah. He held he held the world heavyweight title from 52 to 56, and he re- retired undefeated. I would say Rocky did he? Wow. It, you wouldn't think that, right? No. Because I, the Rocky movies portray him as getting his brains beat in. Well, okay, so I don't want to get too far off subject. Rocky movies were not actually based off Rocky Marciano. Did you know that? Correct. They were based off of one fight with Muhammad Ali. But but where you a think guy you assume lost. Rocky Marciano, yeah. Rocky movies. Right. Obviously. But he was he was an incredible boxer and he was one of those guys that went undefeated, but he fought like dudes. I mean, in a, in a time where boxing was a really big deal did, did in America. You, did you ever actually, like, watch his fights? Like, They're on in TV? black and white. Yeah. But, yeah, you can still watch uh, some of them on YouTube, he, I think. He, like, his fights were legitimately... They were, he, they were bloodbath. He, he, would, he would get beat down for 10 rounds and then one punch knocked the guy out of the ring. But you know who the so. toughest guy in the punch-out video game was? Muhammad Ali. <laughs> yeah, true. Yeah, I mean, you got a point there. Wait, he, so that was yeah. made before now, a lot now, of these guys. And, were... I, and you know, okay, so if we're going to talk about boxing, Muhammad Ali, right? Muhammad yeah. Ali was a phenomenal boxer. Yep. 
but I think he was also like such a celebrity. Yeah, he it, wasn't the dominant he, one. He also yeah. got kind of. Uh, I think he got a little bit um, railed just with his career. I think they they didn't treat his career quite appropriately. Well, it, it was the time period. I have a, I have a problem with yeah. being self proclaimed when you self proclaim yourself the greatest. I, I to do, me, you're not I do the greatest. have a problem with right. that too. I, I just I don't but, know if that's a pride to, thing, but come but, on, man. But let's let's take a look at the majority of these dominant athletes. They look at themselves as oh, the greatest. Oh, agree. They and do, they, yeah. they, and if you don't have swagger, atmosphere. if you don't have some swagger, yeah, yeah. then you're probably not going to be that good, honestly. But you know what? That's yeah. what I like about Messi a little bit is he's, he shuts up a little bit more than Ronaldo. Yeah. No, I, I, I'm not a soccer person. If yeah. I had a favorite, but, it but, would be— But you know what I'm talking about. It would about. be watching Messi. He kind of puts his head down and goes to work. And yes. I love that about him. Um, let's, so, anyways, <laughs> kind of a fun dialogue, though. I'm not, I'm not saying Floyd didn't win. Right, because he obviously won fifty. You know, uh, I'm really excited to talk about crayons. <laughs> but uh, well, well, before don't we do tease that. it, Matt. <laughs> yeah, I, I, but, but Rocky Marciano. Yeah. If you don't, if you don't know that, like, does that change your opinion a little bit? You know, it, it actually does. Yeah, it does. Because um, it was such a hard time to fight and be yeah. good, and the fights were just brutal. Right, and. I mean, he had, I mean, 43 knockouts. Floyd, Floyd that, has won a lot of fights. That is impressive, yeah. But the knockout numbers is probably not the same. No, no, he won by, like, dodging and wearing the other guy yeah. out. Yeah, rope a dope. Yeah. Um, okay, let me throw another one at you. A uh, sport that we all probably grew up with is baseball. And, um, you know, when I begin to think about it, to me there's one person that I think of, and that's Babe Ruth. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you guys come to that conclusion or not, but to me, Babe Ruth was a pitcher. Right. But we know him as the Bronx Bomber. He right. could smack the cover off a ball. He could do anything in baseball he wanted, and he did it out of shape. Yeah. I mean, he was just <laughs> insanely dominant. Mm-hmm. And he's kind of like, he's kind of Mr. Baseball to me. I yeah. know that's like not the official nickname for him. But Babe Ruth to me, um, you know, whether it was pitching, whether it was hitting, like he just did it all, but he didn't do it as this world class athlete. He was just kind of an overweight dude. Right. Well, and he he's kind of like Pele in that he created the sport in a way. There's um, a lot of mystique and yeah, nostalgia yeah. about him. Right. So I don't. Do you guys have any different person for baseball uh, other than for, that? For baseball. I couldn't think of anybody that was bigger than him. I mean, you know, you got the Hank Aaron. I think yeah. Hank Aaron's someone to talk about. Who, um, who was the was was it a I can't remember if it was a Braves guy or um he was uh but he he's been discredited a lot for a lot of his home runs because he was. Um, Talking about Barry Bonds? Yeah, there you go. Barry Bonds. Barry Bonds. San Francisco. San Francisco. He was also, I think, a pirate, right? Was he? I think he was a Pittsburgh pirate no, before he was a the steroids. Player. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. Wow. Arr! Uh, um, yeah, picked him, picked yeah, him up okay. in uh, the Caribbean. Yeah, like Barry Bonds. Like he's got all the uh, like steroid stuff around him. You can't, right. you can't throw him in that argument, even though he holds the baseball home run record and right. all that so what is 70 76 in a year or something like that insane yeah he, it's it was crazy yeah but. let's um let's just run through a couple of these real quick for time's sake um do you have some that are not like well known yes well oh. go ahead no. sorry go ahead. <laughs> no, no i i okay this guy's well known but i don't think anyone would have put this on their list uh travis pastrana is the goat of extreme sports it, when it okay. comes to the extreme sport, you know, skateboard, like you got Tony Hawk, Dave, like I'm a kind of extreme sport. Did you say pastrami? Pastrana. Oh, okay. Pastrana. Yeah, okay. Dude, this guy is like the legend on a dirt bike. <laughs> Man, make some, <laughs> so, some wicked Italian dishes. Just, uh, you know, and he's got the Nitro Circus stuff going on and everything. Um, yeah. Does Sean White count in that? Uh, extreme sports? Yeah. 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 Um, is he on the list? He's not on my list of extreme sports. He's kind of more isolated. Yeah, uh, to snowboarding. Now the cool thing about Sean is he White the greatest is, snowboarder ever? Though he is, he might be. He, I mean, he I'm like invented a, his own he's the trick right. and pulled tomato, it off. Man. And now I think he's the greatest snowboarder. Now ever. the cool thing about Sean White is that he went from snowboarding to skateboarding, and he did really good in skateboarding too. Nice. Is that hard to do? I don't know. I mean, like it, you just never see people doing two sports in extreme sports. And yeah, he was able to do it. So, like, props to Sean White. You it know. probably hurts a little bit more when you fall. So, Travis Pastrana. Yeah, Shout Travis out. Pastrana. Uh, first you guy to support do, the podcast, yeah. hit us up. First guy to do a double backflip on a dirt bike. Guy's a legend. Uh, so, just look him up. So, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to drop an obvious one here because um, he's my boy. It's Michael Jordan. When you yeah. think of athlete, I mean, I, I get there's a lot of people in the world of basketball. The NBA is very popular. Yeah. When you think of who is, a ba- who is the NBA 
it will be Michael Jordan. Mm -hmm. There's just no his legacy. Um, two different three peats in diff in different times. Um, they say the hardest thing to do in any sport is to repeat championships. Uh, the Golden State Warriors are going for a three peat this year. It's right. a hard thing to do. Um, you get very bored. You get very worn out and um, pulled off two three peats in an area where the the competition was really intense. And I know Lancer's a little bit more of a LeBron guy. But um, yeah, but I mean, I don't, I don't but, hate. But Jordan, Jordan though. Jordan's Jordan to me is the goat. He's got the stats. Um, you know, you just have to have all time great stats. He's got six titles. He never let he never let a um, a final series get to a game seven. And the the one thing that separates Jordan, you Matt, you mentioned work ethic. Mm -hmm. That that's what embodies the career of Michael Jordan. Yeah, Michael Jordan would outwork you. I mean, he just he just would outwork you. Um, he was never the greatest shooter. Um, but when he came into the league, he wasn't the best defender, and he made himself into like a nine or ten time all defensive player. Mm -hmm. um, he would he would just work. He got he had a chip on his shoulder. I think that yeah. has part of this too. Like guys with a chip on their shoulder do well do right. well. Well, well, you you know why? Like there's there's a few things, and it's all personal. Why I don't like Jordan, but I do like him. Don't get me wrong. I think he's <laughs> awesome, but I personally don't like him. Because my team growing up was the Atlanta Hawks. Oh, and he and broke your heart. The Hawks were in the playoffs, and they always lost to the Bulls, knocked them out of the playoffs. It killed me. Not just that, also, my favorite player was Dikembe Mutombo. Oh, yeah. And, and he finger-wagged him. There's one time Jordan and Dikembe were trash-talking each other in a locker room one time, and Dikembe's like, you never dunk on me, you never have. And then Jordan goes that same season, next time they play, dunks on Dikembe, yep. finger wags as he walks away. That's why he's uh, the GOAT. I, like, mm -hmm. That's why I hate him, though, because he, I get that, he, totally. he, he hurt my personal Hey, listen, like, I'm, a, I'm an Indianapolis heroes. Colts fan, so tell, you know, let me talk about Tom Brady for a minute. Right, <laughs> right, right. There's a reason why you kind of hate him, but you yeah. respect it at the same time. And Jordan, like, to, to me, Jordan... You know, he he embodied putting fear in opponents. There's some really funny stories out there about really good NBA players that were, you know, getting ready to start a series. And at opening tip-off, I think Penny Hardaway was saying this, at opening tip-off, he looked across, and him and Shaq were on the Orlando Magic at the time. They were playing first-round series against the Bulls. And um, he looked across, and Jordan was just chewing gum, just staring at him. Mm -hmm. And Penny Hardaway said, "Like I had a lump in my throat." <laughs> and he said, "I like I just like looked away, and I kind of looked back, and Jordan was just staring at me." <laughs> and he's like, "I was so scared." <laughs> and he said, "I looked at Shaq and was like, dude, this is over.'" So and the Bulls just annihilated. Like Jordan would impose fear on people, and like to me, I just I think he kind of embodies. You know the the NBA. So, so it's funny. I, I and Space Jam, by the way. Uh, I mean, yeah, well, yeah, LeBron's yeah. about to do that. Too, yeah, it's gonna be but. terrible. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, like, like I said, I don't watch the NBA, like at all. But but Michael Jordan. I watched I watched some uh, highlight reel stuff of Yao Ming versus Shaq, and it's funny. Those were some serious battles right there. It's funny yeah. because like Shaq was good. Yeah, I mean he's no doubt about it, and his stats show it. Yao Ming did better against Shaq. Yeah, he every gave Shaq time. fits, and it it's so great, and it's so great to see Shaq like speechless about it. I know it, it's really funny. We are so running out of time, yeah, so are. let's right. go through fast, real quick. Um, throw throw one out there in a sport. Uh, greatest greatest team sport goat ever, Tom Brady. Okay, yeah. So greatest football player ever, most dominant like, football player. I, I'm saying of team of any sports, team sports of anything that involves a team, Tom Brady. I'm going to push back on that a little bit just because it's a quarterback. There's there's so many things that have to go right in order for a quarterback to be great. I'm not saying he's not, but... I'll let if, you push back, then I'll push back again. If you don't have offensive line play that's good, if you don't have head coaching that's good, if you don't have receivers, a lot of that stuff can bring a quarterback down. Um, Tom Brady's insanely great, but he has also been very blessed with a great organization. I mean, look at Dan Marino. Dan Marino is a way better physical specimen and thrower of the football than Tom. Dan had a great team. He never won a Super Bowl. You know, there's guys that have never that have been better quarterbacks in how they play the game. I mean, Aaron Rodgers is a good example. I'm giving you like a, a 10 second like dinger. Right. Bing. Like, right, time's so, up. so here's my 10 second rebuttal. Uh, Tom Brady <laughs> has been dominant for over 10 years. Agreed. And he has never. Like every Super Bowl he has won, just about a completely different team. 
and Tom Brady is would, the would, consistent. I would of agree that. with that. My, so that, that's why I say that. My most dominant ever in the NFL is Lawrence Taylor. Um, played defensive end for the New York Giants. Okay. And, um, you know, I, I did want to look this up. Lawrence Taylor played for 13 season, 10 Pro Bowl appearances, six All Pros, two Super Bowl titles, and he's revered as the guy that broke Joe Theismann's leg in half. He imposed fear on people to no end. And on defense, you, you, you've played some football, answer. Right. Um, on defense, it's about can you just dominate somebody? Right. That's how you win at defense. And he was still to this day revered as the greatest. Lawrence Taylor, awesome. Yeah. Um, awesome player. Hockey, to me, it's very simple. It's Wayne Gretzky, uh, most dominant ever. Um, okay, that's our 30 minute sports show. <laughs> Hang on. Oh, we got do, more. Do, do we have any female listeners <laughs> still? No. That, like, no, no, yes. I don't know. Serena Williams. Okay, is, yeah. is it, is it without? Yeah. It should be without question. Mia Hamm. Yeah. Hamm. Yes. Serena Williams I is, got the, Serena is Williams the goat of, yeah. of tennis. I really mean, hated her attitude not that long ago, but. Can we give a shout Fantastic. out to um, to Alexander Carolyn, if I get this right? So what? he's a Greco-Roman wrestler, and okay. in 13 years, he's never lost a match, including gold medal appearances That's in the Olympics. Incredible. He's never lost a match in 13 years as a wrestler. That's the winner. That's incredible. 13 years, never lost. That's pretty that, Okay, legit. that guy that, hit that, the goat. That, that, guy, that guy's the goat. Do we count animals? Does Secretariat count? Sure, why not? I mean, secretary, right, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> we got, we got more. So, <laughs> yeah, I got more too, but we'll just shut up. Let's right move there. on. <laughs> I got, a, I got a really honorable mention. I need to mention later. So, remind, <laughs> remind me. We, we got to do a draft. Of <laughs> oh yeah. All right. So let, let's real quick. We're gonna talk about hater, hater great, great mm. Crayola colors. And this the, is the, gonna go quick. So everyone's yeah. picked real Crayola colors. Yep. All right, so let's uh, let's run through uh, ones we think are great real quick, okay? All right, so I'll go first. Uh, two colors that I found. I like laser lemon because mm. it, cool. it, it's just got that good pew, 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 pew. And it just It just is what it is. Sh- sh- I like sh- it. Up. Laser lemon. Uh, this one's this one. I like this one a lot. Razzmatazz. Razzmatazz, Razzmatazz is Razzmatazz. on my list. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a reddish pink color yeah. or something rather. It's actually a pretty cool color. Yeah, I was yeah. like, that's an awesome name. All right. So great okay. for me. Um, one that I loved is Outer Space, 1998. Nice. It's kind of like a grayish green blue. <laughs> it's hard to really describe it. I did look up the date when these were released. Uh, I can tell you this. The 90s was like the best time for colors. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so when we grew up, guys, Just, our crayons were legit Yeah, cool. yeah they were. Uh, Outer Space was really cool. My favorite one, though, is Leather Jacket. And it was one of those Leather scented jacket. crayons. Yes. <laughs> Producer Blake is jumping yeah. for joy. <laughs> Leather Jacket. It was a scented crayon. And it was like, it was a weird color, too. It was like a brownish, dark green combo. But uh, it was like, how could you not love the leather jacket. Nice. So, anyways, yeah. those are no, two no, that those stood are out cool. to me. So, yeah. my, my great was the electric lime. Uh, I think Look that was guys with that lemons one. and lime. Yeah. I remember electric lime. Electric lime. I, I honestly, what I did for this is I just looked up all the colors and it just yeah. had them all on the computer screen. And you just pulled out the ones you like. And liked. I was like, I like that one. W- Wikipedia and it was, electric was lime. great for that. I, yeah. I, I was like, wow, Wikipedia has all of the colors listed. Yeah. 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 Electric lime, definitely mm-hmm. my favorite. Yeah. I think it's great. Mm-hmm. Okay, so, and hate, then uh, hate, ones we hate, hate. hate. Okay, so the reason I hate the ones that I hate is because either they're confusing, or the name is stupid, or yeah, the name is stupid, and I was that kid that just couldn't see the colors very well because <laughs> uh, I have certain color blindness issues. Cornflower, what color do you think that is? Who names something that? It's a shade what? of blue. What? Yeah, corn flower. Yeah, my, is blue. Yeah, my thought is, oh, yellow. No, I was thinking like a sandy brown. Yeah, color. or yeah. something. Yeah. yeah, I was thinking like cornbread. Yeah, yeah. don't okay. you use corn flour to make cornbread? And, and then the <laughs> the other one that I hate, inchworm. I have inchworm, inchworm on my list. Like, inchworm what? is a color. <laughs> yeah. It's a color, and it like it's a terrible color. It's too. like it's a mustardy yellow ish. with a green in it. Yeah, yeah it's like, like that, yeah. it was gross. Yeah. Um, so the two that I hated was fuzzy wuzzy. <laughs> it's literally yeah, like it's literally like this. It almost went on my like list. <laughs> horrible brown color, and um, it's just not a good color. Yeah. The other one that I didn't like was marvelous. 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 Oh wow! If you know the color mauve, it's like this purplish. Is it a mauve? maroon pink? Uh, and it's just bleh. what a. That's all it is. But the name is words. it's. It's such a letdown. Yeah. Marvelous. And you're like, yeah, I never want to use this crayon. And it's not crayon. that good. No. Yeah. Yeah. 
So the one that I hate is Unmellow Yellow. I think it's Un-mellow it's yellow. like even the name describes that it's like kind of lame. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. so, I don't have the ears on the hate one. Sorry, producer. So, like, yeah, so yeah, Unmellow <laughs> Yellow. And, and honestly, once again, I just looked at the colors and I was like, which one is the most disgusting? Unmellow yellow was the one, and nice. it, it just they should have look. named it. Don't use me. <laughs> yeah, it was just it was just like this is a lame color. We just need to fill a slot in the Crayola box. So disappointing. <laughs> I wonder what the guy who was like naming these colors was drinking. <laughs> wow. <laughs> mm. Now, okay, now I've brought this up before. I think with us, but when it comes to Crayola colors, why don't they have a box of skin tones? Just like all the different, because that's the one thing you always struggle with when you're coloring is like, <laughs> like what color do I use to color this person's skin, right? And yeah. you always like use some like orange or, or something weird, gross looking. It never looks right. Or yellow. Or yellow. Yeah. If you're trying to do a white person. I guess. Why do they, we have the white crayon? For the black paper. For the black paper <laughs> yeah. only. It's yeah. so, yeah. so weird. Yeah. Because most of the time you're coloring on white paper right. generally yeah the white but the crayon, white crayon's always in there never it, it's always that like not trying to make a racist one, joke but yeah. it's always that pristine crayon yeah yeah see see i was that kid that never used <laughs> I, I i like sketching rather than coloring i didn't like coloring that much so i always used the black crayon so my black crayon was always just like used up gone yeah. broken mm-hmm my son's favorite color is black, so uh, we have like eighty-five nice. black crayons in <laughs> our house. Honestly, that's the most useful one, though. Yeah, I, I when would it agree. Really comes down mm-hmm. to it, yeah, yeah, hundred yeah, percent. You guys want to draft something? Because yeah, this draft's going to take a little while. I have a feeling we breeze through that hitter great, but this yeah. draft is going to be fun. And uh, like, we could have gone a whole episode on the athletes thing. I think. Yeah. Oh yeah, I could have kept going. Y'all yeah, could have gone a whole episode. Too. I'm sitting there just like I literally have like thumbs. twenty names on my paper. <laughs> I think Aaron. I think we have spent literally forty-eight hours of our life. Just arguing about debating sports. athletes. Yeah, yeah, you and me. Just personally. Lancer and I personally have spent a lot of time debating right. sports. It's a lot of fun, though. I haven't. Uh, but what I have <laughs> done is I've spent a lot of time looking at Hollywood road vehicles. Because yeah. um, so, I'm a loser. So this is a draft <laughs> over Hollywood road vehicles. Uh, let's see. The order that we're going in is I'm number one, Lancer's number, number two, two, and Aaron's number three. Man. Yeah. Um, right. So with the Hollywood road vehicles, we said we we made this specific of, <laughs> of road vehicles. <laughs> oh man! Um, and not uh, yeah, no spaceships, no, sp- no airplanes, right. no has to um, be helicopters, drivable on a street, no yep. hovercrafts. Yeah, right, right. So uh, with that in mind, <laughs> right, I'll go ahead and kick it off. <laughs> kick it off. Do it. All All right. Right. Who's one. taking these down? Am I taking them down? Yeah, take them down. All right. yeah, take, take it down. down. You've been taking them down. All right, so number one, and I I have, like, five listed. So we're doing four rounds, right? Four rounds, yeah. So I have five listed, and I could do number one with every single one of them. Nice. And uh, But I'm going to go with number one because it's not only my favorite, but I think it's a pretty popular favorite. The 1981 DeLorean. Oh, oh yep. yep. That DMC-12. Was, that was the number one. From Back to the Future. I mean, you could travel through time. Yeah. yeah, I mean, you, how can you beat traveling through time? Plus, it was just an awesome car. It's got those doors that like stainless flip steel. Up. Yeah, I mean, it's just sweet. Little Lots known of fact about but... the DeLorean, though. Yeah, it was actually not a fast car. It's a really slow car because yes. it's it super heavy. heavy and it was yeah. way underpowered. Yes, but yeah. still, it's so, a cool car. So my uh, my sister and brother in law met a guy who uh, who had a DeLorean, and um, it's funny because he was like, "Please don't touch it. There's it gets lots of fingerprints." Yeah, <laughs> and, yeah. Uh, I believe. But he said that he found it like it was just like, like abandoned. Yeah, it was, it was just like sitting on the side of the road, just kind of rusting away. And uh, he bought it from a guy and took it and uh, restored it. Restored it, and it's his. Wow! Now. I was like, that's awesome. He bought it like super cheap. It had dude. those um, the doors that fold up. On yeah, it, I the believe, gold right? wing doors. Gold wing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. that's. Yep. That's a great pick. It's, it's, it's cool right. At the and it's got the flux capacitor. Yeah. I mean, it's, mm-hmm. it's got everything. Yeah. So. Yeah. 1.21 gig- gigawatts. Gigaw- gigawatts. 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 Yeah, gigawatts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So. yeah <laughs> All right. So second pick, right? Mm-hmm. Yep. All right. So second pick, I think this is probably one that uh, a lot of people would put at their number one, but the DeLorean's good there. Please don't take it. Uh, Batman Begins 2005 Batmobile. I hate you. Yeah, that was, uh, <laughs> that was a pretty epic car. Do you get to own all the Batmobiles? Uh, I specifically said the two the tumbler the the Batman Begins yeah, Batmobile yeah. the tumbler the tumbler yeah, the tumbler. yeah, yeah. I, I think 
Yeah, that's that's specific to that one. Yeah, um, um, I, I chose that specific one, um, but yeah, that one is like just awesome. It's it got is cool. Everything on it you could ever imagine. Yeah. So uh, yeah, that's the one I'm going it's with. It's just guys. kind of a beast vehicle. Yeah, it's like it's a cross between like a Humvee and a supercar and, and a, a tank. tank. <laughs> yeah, like it's yeah. everything with wheels the size of your I, right. entire. I body. think for <laughs> sake of argument, I think we need to just we need to just say the Batmobile. The, just the Batmobile. Yeah, and okay. I, I, th- I think you just own them Honestly, all. It'll it be it'll be really me. hard to differentiate. I think. Yeah, okay. I'll own all of the them. The Batmobile cool. was my number. One. <laughs> Batmobile was my number one. DeLorean was my number two. Okay. I mean, but they yeah. were like I said, there were two that I thought were interchangeable. Yeah. And those were the two at the top. So thank mm-hmm. you guys. Uh, this draft stinks for me. <laughs> um, in the third pick of the first round, I'm gonna go with. Um, I'm gonna go with the 007 Aston Martin. That's a good um, pick. It's it's super tricked out. It's a sweet car. Um, you know, whether you're Sean Connery, whether you're, uh, what's the, uh, Daniel Craig, is he, uh, the newest 007 guy? Um, yeah. The Aston mm-hmm. Martin is a slick ride. So I, I, I went really specific on it. So I had like the DB5. Yeah. From the, I didn't uh, remember. Original. I thought it was like the DB5. The, the Vanquish was it for a while. Yeah. I think it's like the DB9. Nine. I think it's the nine. Now. Mm-hmm. But anyways, we're just going to say the 007. Yeah. Agent 007's Aston Martin. I think that's fair. Not a bad pick. If, we, if we're doing Batmobile, I think that works. Yeah, right. I, I just think it's easier that yeah. way to clarify. So, yeah. Um, You're up. All right, so I'm up with the back-to-back here. And, oh, man. I don't know. Th- this is where it kind of gets into, I don't know, they're all kind of in the same class to me. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm just going to take one that I think is cool because I don't know what else to do. <laughs> um I'm going with the Pontiac Firebird Trans Am from Smokey and the Bandit. Okay. It's All a right, classic yeah. car. If you look up the movie, the first thing you see is I've that car. I've never seen that movie. I have not either, but the car is amazing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think it was like a 76. All you movie I'm buffs not, out I'm there not don't kill right. it. But it's a cool car. It's got like the flaming Firebird right on the front. Yeah. And so I'm going to I'm gonna take the uh, Pontiac Firebird Trans Am, nice. Smokey and the Bandit. Not a bad pick. So here I am. Um, I got a bunch of picks here that I like, but I think I'm going to go with the one that I think is about to leave the board here. I'm going with the Gone in 60 Seconds, 1967, oh, Shelby Mustang GT500. The Eleanor. El- the Eleanor. I'm really disappointed that you took Eleanor. Yeah, that, that's the one that I think is uh, pretty epic. And you know what's so sad is the car gets destroyed at the end of the movie. Yeah. Oh, spoiler alert if you haven't seen the movie, by the way. <laughs> it's a spoiler so, alert from, what is it, the Spoiler alert <laughs> after I gave the spoiler on yeah. the movie you should have already seen. Yeah. So The, the 90s uh, redo of uh, an original movie. Yeah, Nicolas yeah. Cage, right? Yeah. 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 No, that's such a beautiful car. Yeah, it's it's absolutely gorgeous. And the, yep. the colors that they put on that car, like that gunmetal gray, I think is yeah. what it was. Mm-hmm. Very cool. Very yeah. cool. Yeah. So. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you on that one. All right. Well, you didn't pick my number two. Too, which uh, so Lancer leading up to this was talking about how he couldn't think of any motorcycles to go on these things. I got one motorcycle. Don't take mine. So I've got one that I think deserves to be on this list. That's the Tron bike. The Tron oh, bike. The okay. Tron bike. Okay. I mean, yeah. you think about like that's a cool bike. One of the coolest bikes in movie history, and it's like one of the only cool things of that old Tron movie. I hate to admit that didn't make my list, and it should have. It's a good. It's, it's a, cool a good bike. vehicle. Okay, <laughs> and I mean, like, you, you build walls behind you while you go. I mean, I Trump mean, would love it. I mean, yeah, yeah true. <laughs> oh, wow, that was good. Okay, so I've never seen Tron, so yeah. I, I, that's why I wouldn't. Have that surprises about it. me. You should so. watch it. It's actually a decent movie. Okay. Yeah, well, I mean, uh, what I would say is watch the new one because I think you would be more into the new one than the old yes, one. Yes, hundred percent. The okay. the old one. Is one of those hokey 80s movies that you might not like so much. Okay. Um, it's funny because it's it's hokier with its graphics than Star Wars, but Star Wars was made before it. Really? Because Star Wars used models and things, and it looked a lot better. Okay. But anyway, that's beside the point. So uh, for number three, uh, I'm going to go... I'm, I'm sticking with some technology here. Mm. I'm going with Kit. Kit? Kit from Knight Rider. Really? Holy moly. Do you guys not know about Kit from Night No, Rider? I don't. Kit the Explain. talking car? 
Explain this to me. It's a. I think it's a. Tra- I, I should have looked this oh, up, wait, but wait. I believe it's a Trans Am. Yeah. yeah okay. Um, I know what you're talking about now. I'm sorry. I didn't know the yeah, name of it. It's a, kit. it's it's like the original smart car. Right. The, the thing was awesome. Okay. It was like one of the most iconic vehicles in TV series history. Right. No. When yeah. you said Trans Am, and then I connected it with uh, what what was the show again? You uh, said Night Rider. Night Rider. You just yeah. said. It. Yeah, once you it's one... got it's got that red light that goes back and yeah, forth. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh-huh. It's a cool looking car. Yeah. Oh, it's it's a legit car. Very, uh, very, um, very much iconic classic. I just mm-hmm. didn't know the name was Kit. So there yeah, you go. yeah, there we go. Yeah. So we got Kit rounding off oh, uh, the man. top Lots of round three. Lots of 80s stuff right here. I'm yeah. telling you, yeah, the cars were a big thing in movies. Man, yeah. I feel like I'm going to be repeating myself on my next two favorite ones, but I don't care. And I think this one. Uh, I don't think you guys would have picked this one, but it's awesome. If you ever watch Stars, Starsky and Hutch, uh, the 1976 Ford Grand Torino. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Epic. Mm-hmm. I loved it. Um, and by the way, I fell in love with Starsky and Hutch when it was uh, the new movie came out with it. Who was it? Gotcha. Uh, ben Stiller and who was uh, the, oh, uh, uh, Owen Wilson. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, mm-hmm. that was it. So, And they made it a comedy. And great movie. I think wow. it's ser- seriously underrated. <laughs> so, yeah. But that car looked sweet in that movie. Yeah. So. Mm-hmm. Nice. Man. Watch it. I am I am so lost on this draft. <laughs> no idea what to take. Well, it's about time you get lost on a draft. <laughs> yeah, I've been dominating. Uh, most dominant draft player ever, Aaron oh, yeah. Harris. Aaron, um, yeah. With our nine votes on it. <laughs> so don't give away our secrets. <laughs> so that's all Matt has to do to try to minimize the fact yep. he can't ever win. Yep. Um, I'm going, <laughs> you mentioned something about the original smart car. I'm going with a car that was super smart. Kind of had a mind of its own, but was always your best friend. It was there for you. I mean, if you were in a jam, you could call and this car would come. This car could win races. This car could drive on two wheels. I'm going with Herbie the Love Bug. I, t- Ooh, I saw that okay. one come in and I'm really disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> Why? It's a great car. Because it's... Okay. Lindsay, no, no. It, I, just, I just see Lindsay Lohan. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, what was that? Fully loaded? Yeah. yeah. No, I'm talking about like the old Herbie that I grew yeah, up yeah, with. Yeah, yeah the it old was one. A, it was a great car. Yeah, it was like your best friend kind of car, but yeah. he was always there for you. Yeah, I just so. think that Kit's a lot cooler than yeah. Herbie. <laughs> we'll find out about that because you were like, yeah, Kit. And we're like, oh, yeah. Kit. I, I, Cat? I, I think Aaron's going to get all the female vote with that one right there. So. I don't know how. Okay. <laughs> maybe maybe you're right on that. I don't, I'm don't. Yeah. i not sure on that. Um Last one here, I mean, gosh, there's like one that I feel like should be taken, but I kind of want a motorcycle. Um, I'm going to go with the Ghost Rider Chopper. Okay. So, yeah, I, right? didn't, I didn't even consider that one. You yeah. know, you get you get the flaming bike. I think you have yeah. to like sell your soul, soul to the devil. I'm yeah, not real like sure that. on that. <laughs> yeah. But, but um, I don't know. I have this weird love for choppers for some reason. Okay. And it's a cool bike. I mean, it's got like the metal chains that go down and uh, catches on fire when you ride it and you turn into a, a skeleton. Yeah. Right. I'm not a big on chopper f- guy, but that, that's an iconic it's a, it's bike. It's a cool bike. So yeah. I'm going with mm-hmm. the Ghost Rider chopper. Okay. I don't know if it has an actual name. I don't know that it does either, but I don't know you that know, much yeah. about Ghost Rider, I'll be honest. You know, I, shot in the dark. So I my, just know Nicolas Cage by the last one. <laughs> my, my turn, right? So, yeah. All right. So, uh, with my last pick, I'm just going to go ahead and say I'm. I'm going to go through this whole draft and not have a motorcycle. You're um, the motorcycle guy. And so. I'm the motorcycle guy. And I'm going to I'm going to say this. I don't think that any hardly any of the motorcycles in any of the movies are legitimate good motorcycles, honestly. Tron um, bike is a legitimate. I mean, it's, it's not a real motorcycle. Like <laughs> no, I'm no. such a like a motorcycle purist in a certain way, I guess, to okay. where like you're one of those there's people. certain motorcycles I just don't like just because I know what they are. But like if you if you're just someone who likes to look at it, what about a motorcycle cool. that it, catches on fire when you drive it? it I mean but it, but it see it's a chopper. And, you catch and I on think fire. choppers are awful motorcycles. In the but in, in the new they got Tron. swag. <laughs> I mean they, that's about all they got. <laughs> they're, dripping swag. They're, they're they're bad for everything else. But <laughs> in the new Tron, when you watch it, you'll see a, a, toward the beginning of it, he drives his dad's old Ducati. Okay. You would appreciate that. I, I do like a Ducati. Yeah. That's but a anyway. nice bike. Anyway, yeah, so uh, my last pick, I got to go with something. I know where you're going, I think. Oh, man. So I got one, two, uh, three that I'd really like to pick right now. Um, but I'm going to go with the, I think this counts, the Speed Racer Mach 5. 
Oh, nice. So, from the cartoon. So, <laughs> that's the one I'm going to go that. with. Yeah, that's um, awesome. Yeah, with a Not Speed what Racer. I thought he was going with. Got, got a bunch of different buttons. He can just do all these different uh, speed racer, actions go. and stuff. Yeah, so I was like, you know what? Go, go, Speed Racer. I, yeah. I loved watching Speed Racer going up. So, got to go Speed Racer. Five. Yeah. Right. That's awesome. I did not consider Speed Racer. Right. I, didn't, I didn't even think about cartoons. I'll be. Yeah, it just kind of. just wasn't something that came to mind. Came up to me. All right, so I think I'm going to go with this one because, well,. I feel like it has to be picked up. Um, I, I, I'm going to have one or two honorable men. I'll have one, at least one honorable mention. But I'm going to go with the 1973 GT Ford Falcon from Mad Max. Nice. The Interceptor. Yeah, good pick, good pick. And it just I feel like it has to get picked up because it's just a mean vehicle. And, you know, they, they put that... It was fake, but they put that supercharger on it that just made it look sweet. Right. And uh, it was just a cool car. What was really disappointing was the new movie, how quickly it, you know, got destroyed. Oh, see, I haven't seen the new movie either on that one. Man. Never mind. You didn't hear that. (laughs) Spoiler alert. Oh, no. (laughs) The car is going to get destroyed. (laughs) Actually, if you watch the trailer, they show it rolling over, like, getting smashed up. And you're like, oh, okay. (laughs) Oh, well, darn. Yeah. Um, Man, uh, we left a lot of stuff off. Yeah, we did. (laughs) You guys want to go five? I could go. I could go. I could go, 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 go five. Okay, go all right, for the fifth, I'm gonna do a fun one then. All right, number five, Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. Oh, <laughs> there you go. Because <laughs> it can fly. Chitty Chitty Bang <laughs> well, Bang. Well, then it could float on the water and whatever. It's it's just like the most versatile car ever. Right. Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. Plus, it was just a sweet. Vehicle. You only get about Wasn't I it? think 25 miles an hour though. <laughs> was it a Studebaker or something like that? I don't know. It was really old. Yeah. Those. Those were cool cars. It, it's a, it's a, it's on my list. Yeah, those those were really cool cars. Okay, All go right. ahead, Lance. All right, so my my, I'm gonna go with a fun one too. Um, I'm gonna go with the Ghostbusters 1959 Cadillac. Mm. There you go. That's what nice. I'm going yeah. with here. Mm-hmm. So that's gonna be my next uh, favorite. That's a station wagon, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. like mm-hmm. a really ugly station wagon. Yeah, yeah, I like it. It, it had the wings on it. I think it's a Miller Meteor. I think mm-hmm. that's what it was. So, I don't know. I don't know. It, it looks funny. So. All right. I don't so, know my Ghostbusters. Yet. So we're all going with like fun ones. And so I'm going to round this out with a fun one. And um, I got a couple of kids, both yeah. are boys. This one's a personal favorite of mine as well as something my kids like. I'm going with the greatest car Disney's ever had, Lightning McQueen. Lightning McQueen. <laughs> Lightning all McQueen. Right. Yeah, he's he's go. got a little hot rod yeah. in him. He's got uh-huh. a little hot shot. But he comes through for the people of Radiator Springs. Nice. ka I'm going with my man Lightning McQueen. <laughs> right. Nice. So uh, any any other honorable mentions? Uh, yeah, have? I think we have to mention We're All Stupid because the General Lee's still on the board. General yeah, Lee, I, you yeah. know, I thought and about it. None of us picked it. It's iconic. It is. But, hey, we didn't pick it. I couldn't, I couldn't pass <laughs> there's up a the lot other ones of, that I picked. There's a <laughs> lot of vehicles. I mean, we didn't pick the Mystery Machine right. Right. from Scooby-Doo. Right. Um. I mean, what else the, did you guys the 18, have? 18 GMC 18, van. Yeah, the van. Uh, you know, I, I almost threw on, but I, I passed it up because it was too close to the to Eleanor, is the 1969 Mustang on John Wick. Okay. Beautiful, beautiful yeah. car. And uh, there's Very nice car. Pretty cool. Can we just all agree? We, we all love Mustangs. I also love John Wick. I, well, <laughs> it depends on which Mustang. No, no, the one that I passed up. It, it does It does depend. Fox Bud. <laughs> right. <laughs> no, the... Uh, Grease Lightning from Grease, 1948 Ford. I uh, mm-hmm. I just thought it was a cool... I mean, yes. when it really comes down to it, it's probably kind of a lame car because it's kind of slow and everything, but it was kind of iconic and oh, kind of yeah. neat. The whole mm-hmm. song about it, so... Right, right. Yeah. Um, one that made my list was uh, Bumblebee from Transformers. Yeah. Um, okay. Pretty awesome that your car can turn into a robot and fight aliens, so... Yeah, yeah. Um, that, that one's pretty cool. One other one that I put on here that I, I actually think is really cool in the movie... So, like, would I have this in real life? Probably not. But within the movie, I actually think the Mini Cooper from The Italian Job. Yes. Like, that's actually yeah, should okay. be in here. So I, That's I kind of iconic that. for those movies. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> there was obviously a remake of The Italian Job. Yes. They used Mini Coopers, but the old one used them as well. Yes. And so, I don't know if you guys... The original Mini yeah, Coopers. I didn't know if you guys thought about that. Yeah, I did. But anyway, so yeah. I had them on. I had them on the list, the Mini Cooper from that. I thought about putting them on my list, but I <laughs> felt like they were a little bit... Dinky, yeah, it's kind of like that, yeah. it's, that's they, why they, I didn't pick are. them. But and they, they soup cool. them up in like they the do movie soup and them stuff. Up. But still, it, but but that's what they, there was a reason why they wanted the Mini Coopers. So, so here's one that I put on my list because it's super cool. Did you guys ever watch the Monsters? 
Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Do you remember their car? Oh, it was This is their car. I'm just going to show you a picture of it. It's like oh, a yeah. it's like a hearse hot rod. Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. It is a super yeah. super cool yep. car. It's yep. basically like I think like Twisted Metal had something like that in it too. Yeah, uh <laughs> Twisted Metal the video game. Yeah. Um that you know what that reminded me of was the Beverly Hillbillies car too. Yeah. Oh man, that thing so, was loaded mm-hmm. down yeah, too. Yeah. Like the rocking chair <laughs> in the back. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Um trying to think of Oh, I put um I don't know what that was. <laughs> um, producer Blake. Uh, You're fired. Get Ned in here. Get, edit that out. Um, I put I put the motorcycle from Batman Begins. Yes. Yeah, I, I think they call it the Bat Pod. Bat Pod, yeah. Mm-hmm. The Bat Pod is super cool. It is cool. I had it on my list, too, and I didn't take it's, it. It's like the Tumblr motorcycle. Yeah. But now, the whole thing where, like, the wheels turn sideways on it. Yeah, is that in, that's is that in Batman Begins at all? Because I know um, I know that it's in. Uh, I thought it was in Batman Begins, but I know it's in the Dark Knight. Yes, maybe I miss I misspoke. So, I think it's also in Dark Knight Rises. Yes, but it is a super cool thing. Yeah, oh, it it's is. very cool. Now the reason I didn't pick it is, is because, because it's not a legit motorcycle. Well, no, actually, <laughs> it's not. It's because, and I might be wrong on this, so this could be a fatal flaw for mine. But uh, I thought it when the Batmobile fell apart, it turned into the Bat Pod. That's what I'm thinking. I could be wrong with that though. Like it like Oh, it, it was like leftover parts? Yeah, like I think it was like able to come out of the Batmobile onto the Bat Pod, which is the motorcycle. Maybe I or, think the producer Blake. Or, all right, you, so you're you hired do, again. You do detach right, cool. from the Tumblr. So that, that so yeah. so it's part of the Tumblr originally or say the first time they ever showed it, that's how it came. Yeah, I think, really? I think it does. Okay. Yeah. So it, it was really just part of the Batmobile. So in a way I did pick a Okay. All right. Well, <laughs> so, <laughs> in a very roundabout way. Right. <laughs> so I, I feel like I should still be on my list, though, as a separate entity, because it is a super cool vehicle. Yeah. Right. Uh, nonetheless. Either yeah. way, there. I'm sure there's people screaming at us saying, "You left off my, you know, favorite thing." So to recap real quick, Matt, you have the DeLorean at number one. Mm-hmm. You have the Tron bike. You have Kit from Knight Rider. Um, the 1975 GT from Mad Max and Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. Right, it was in 1973, but I'll, I'll, yes. 73. Sorry, I can't. I, I yeah, I can't read my own handwriting. Yeah, that's a that's an operator error. Yep. Uh, Lancer, you're riding with Batman Begins Tumblr. We're just going to call it the Batmobile, mm-hmm. and say yeah. you just you just get those. So mm-hmm. uh, congratulations on your win, Lancer. Uh, <laughs> you have uh, gone in 60 seconds, Eleanor. You have the Ford Grand Torino. You have the Speed Racer Mach Five and the Ghostbusters wagon. And pretty strong. That's pretty strong. Yeah, that that Mach 5 came out of nowhere. Yeah. For me. That was, it's pretty awesome. <laughs> it's a good list. I feel like you won it in round one, but uh, that's just a ode to my childhood. <laughs> um, I'm going to start off with the 007 Aston Martin, Smokey and the Bandit, Trans Am, uh, Herbie, uh, the Ghost Rider Chopper, and Lightning McQueen. So, anyways, it's a very. In- I thought this draft was going to be super weird. Like we were going to kind of be all over the place on it. And I am shocked that Lancer didn't take a motorcycle. Yeah. That does yeah. actually well, yeah. surprise me a little bit. So I'm like, surprised that something like the Tron bike was not in your library. Like Yeah. Do you feel like you're kind of like not being true to yourself by not taking one? No, I'm I feel like I'm being extremely true to myself because I know in real life a lot of the motorcycles in movies and stuff I wouldn't actually ride. Yeah. In real life. So yeah. It's All right, there you go. Loser. Okay. Know. Something <laughs> like that. So. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you once again for listening to Shoot from the Hip. We appreciate you guys listening in, and uh, you can find us on pretty much anywhere that you listen to podcasts, except for iHeartRadio because they're, eh, they're dumb. What did you tell me we're on now? Uh, the new one, new Stitcher. Platform. Stitcher. Yeah. We are on Stitcher. Like right. we weren't on Stitcher the other day, and I was are we officially on it now. Yeah, we're on Stitcher. Okay. Yeah. All right. So uh, you can find us over there. Um, uh, you can also find us on Twitter at Hipshot Podcast. Be sure to follow us over there, and we'll and vote up, on the polls. Yes, we'll put up this draft, and you can vote on that. And then uh, you can follow us on Facebook, facebook.com forward slash Shoot from the Hip Podcast. Once again, if you like our page, take a screenshot, direct message it to us, and then also direct message to us your address, and we will sh- send you a personalized postcard. That was a lot of. Yeah. Little words in there. Personalized autographed postcard. Yes. Um, so then you can also. <laughs> With find... our names. Yes. <laughs> and our faces. <laughs> uh, you can also find us on Instagram, Hipshot Podcast. We might post something over there again if we, uh, if we really want to, but, you know, no promises. We'll, we'll right. do it. We'll do it eventually. 
Um, if you didn't notice, uh, we did do a Facebook Live for the before this video because, you know, we want to get you We've guys. We've got some, nothing better to do. <laughs> well, we want to give you guys a little bit of an inside scoop on how we a little uh, taste of the glory. Yeah, right. how we set up and how we really prep for this stuff, which is not much at all because we are shooting from the hip. Right. All right. So thank you once again for listening. You guys have a fantastic day.